seemed unimportant then has now possessed my memory. How we treated one another, how we lived, takes on great significance. In Mexico, the ancient celebrations for the dead take place on the first and second day of November, when the souls of the dead return to visit the living. The preparations are given long and elaborate attention, marking the sacredness of the visit. I remember the lullabies of my childhood. They weren't of fairy tales of imaginary elves, but lullabies of that constant companion, death. Octavio Paz wrote, in its celebrations, a culture steps outside time to acknowledge enduring truths. Time is no longer succession and becomes what it originally was, the present, in which past and future are reconciled. In celebrating death, we stepped outside time and so transcend the eternal cycle of life and death. Ancient Mexicans call this day the Feast of Death and Flowers, celebrating the transitory and flowering nature of life. I still smell the aroma of the Simpasuchi filling the air with expectation. On the Day of the Dead, Grandmother scattered petals to mark a path to the door so that our dead could find their way home. cooked for the souls is placed on the altar offering so that they too can enjoy its aroma. dedicated an entire month to honoring the dead. The last days of the celebration coincided with the Catholic feast of all saints and all souls. The Indians incorporated the Catholic rituals into their ancient celebrations for the dead, today known as Los Días de Muertos, or the Days of the Dead. A gift of a sugar skull with my name pasted on its forehead was a playful reminder of that fearful end.
and is regarded as a gathering place not only for the souls of those nearby, but for all souls. Under the veneer of westernization, the cultures of the Indian world that have existed for 30,000 years continue to live, sometimes in a magical way, sometimes in the shadows.
life into the imagery of death. His engravings mock the vanities of the living. López Portillo, de la Marina Hurtado, quisiera que viniera otro temblor para llevarse el dinero a Suiza, para vivir como rey en unas macas de seda, como está López Portillo viviendo. Aquí está la información de las calaveras, las calacas de los funcionarios, de los grandes funcionarios que se encuentren enterrados en el Panteón General. In ancient Mexico, artistic endeavor was called song and flower. In creating, the good artist was believed to be deified or close to God. El buen pintor, entendido, Dios en su corazón, diviniza con su corazón a las cosas, dialoga con su propio corazón, como si fuera un tolteca pinta los colores de todas las flores. Lo que inventé vaya de un sueño que tuve, un sueño muy feo. Allá por donde según anduve yo, le dicen el lugar de la eternidad. En el sueño vi a, a los alebrijes. Pero son unos animales muy feos, como las nubes cuando van caminando, que se van, tom van tomando diferentes formas. Así eran los alebrijes. Venían sobre de mí como queriendo devorarme y iban cambiando formas. Por ejemplo, una cabeza de toro, una cabeza de víbora, se iban transformando. at this age now where I have to start worrying about death, so maybe this is a good idea then, you know? I mean, this whole group is, is up at the area, at, I mean, up at the age now where we have to start worrying about death. Uh, they were poor, didn't have so anything, so they had something to look forward in another life, and they promised them these things, so it gave them a reason for living, and it made them want to, that death wasn't something to be afraid of, not to fear. We fear death, but the Indians didn't. When my husband died, I tried to, uh, I wanted to talk about it. And I went to my uncles who I thought could help me. And when I started to talk about my husband, he just, he just shrugged his shoulders and left the room. He didn't want to hear about it. And people need to deal with their grief. They need to talk about it. They need to understand it. And there is a grief period that is just awful if you don't talk about it. It's just, Heartbreaking. Thank you. 
ancestors, time was a wheel. The risings and settings of the sun and the moon were evidence of its eternal turning. The universe was a single, unified whole. Within it took place the endless struggle of opposites, night and day, light and dark, life and death. Matachines se le ha puesto porque anteriormente andaban los matachines y entraban casa por casa a cantar las alabanzas y al cantar, acabando de cantar, entonces de la, le tenía usted que regalarle algo, ¿no? De pan, de fruta, ¿no? Y casa por casa iban cantando alabanzas. ¿Qué significa el símbolo de la calavera en el Valle de Oaxaca? Pues este, pues viene siendo una este, forma como una, una semejante que pues es en realidad tal como se ve la calavera si tenemos que verlos nosotros. <risa> In this Day of the Dead celebration, people mock death and gender and whatever else needs a little push. We remember the dead by celebrating life. In the general disorder of a fiesta, everyone forgets himself and enters into otherwise forbidden situations and places. Music and mere noise are united, not to recreate or recognize themselves, but to swallow each other up. Mexican society, where rules of behavior have been prescribed for thousands of years. It's in the fiesta and the comparsa that we can allow ourselves to be free momentarily, to expose our inner selves to the rest of the community. <laughs> Por él, señor. 
círculos de muertos siempre sale una mujer enlutada y sin colores de máscara, solamente con rayones, con efectos oscuros. Eh, existe la burla de la gente eh, que las conoció al ser, a estar con, en matrimonio y siempre se rió de ellas porque el marido o era celoso o las golpeaba mucho, pero ellas no viendo eso, ellas amaban y amaban y amaban. Hay viudas demasiado alegres, demasiado coquetas, en pleno velorio, en pleno entierro, ya andan buscando otro. Desde el momento que se llama ofrenda, pues se le ofrenda, aparte de ofrendarle a los muertos, eh, toda la tradición del altar, todas las cosas, se le ofrenda eso, recordarlos. Haciendo memoria a la muerte, queriendo mucho a la muerte, porque al fin y al cabo acabamos en eso, con la muerte. Hasta el más humilde siente la obligación de la ofrenda. Es como cuando agarra y te ofrecen una manzana, te la ofrecen con la mejor, las sonrisas, te dan y no esperan nada más, te dan, comparten, te invitan. Eso es tradición. Eso es leyenda. La palabra ofrenda tiene un significado muy profundo dentro de las raíces, tanto indígenas en sí, en todas las culturas. La ofrenda es una palabra de amor. Y el amor no tiene precio. Ahorita le traemos un aceito hasta cada año. Muy sencillo. Muchas gracias, comadrita. Muchas gracias, comadrita. Muchas gracias, comadrita. Tomen asiento, comadrita. Gracias, comadrita. Se van a tomar un refresquito, ¿eh? Gracias, comadrita. Yo no creo que nada tenga que acabar con la tradición en México. Porque la ofrenda sigue. Even those of us who are born here. 
So it becomes a central way of reinforcing that and reinforcing it uh, among the community itself in connecting uh, each other uh, to one another through that culture and through the acknowledgement that we all share the same ancestors, whether it's an ancestor who died yesterday or who died a thousand years ago. <laughs> Evolution has really been the movement from a very internal and close, small community celebration of people reaffirming the Dia de los Muertos tradition of folk art and of honoring their own uh, family members to a very large movement now that involves people outside of the Latino or mission community. This sort of Western world that we live in doesn't give people a lot of opportunity to deal publicly with death. It's something you don't talk a lot about. You get it over with real quick. And the aspect of building the altar, for instance, involves time. And it's a recuerdo, a, a remembrance every year. So death isn't like a closed chapter in a book. It's something that you think about every year, that you come back to, and that you bring the spirit of the person you love back with you. What gives it power, I believe, is that it is a group process that, that involves people and makes them stronger. nostalgia. Here our celebrations may be different from those in Mexico, but the spirit of the tradition lives on. Por cada muerto se pone una vela y, y se visten con sus moños. Cuando hay uno, o uno que se murió recientemente, se le hace una vela especial, más grande, más gruesa, y se le pone una, un pan más grande y se adorna con lágrimas. Dice que las personas nombran esas figuras lágrimas. Se hacen figuras en el pan, distintas figuritas de animalitos, angelitos y muñequitos. Se pone agua, de preferencia el agua no debe de faltar. Creo que el agua y el, el copal, el somerio no debe de faltar porque eso es lo que atrae lo bueno. Nosotros tenemos fe en que en este día vienen los nuestros seres en espíritu creemos que a medianoche llegan y pues ellos pensamos que agradecen que nosotros le dedicamos este día y hacemos todo lo posible de poner en comida y fruta todo lo que ellos acostumbraban a comer adornamos con flor de cempasúchil que es la flor natural de este tiempo Tiene un olor muy especial, la flor. La flor, el olor de la flor con, con el olor del copal mezclado da un olor a ozono, algo así como el olor del hueso. Ya sea aquí o en otro lugar, eh, nuestros seres queridos, ellos vienen en cualquier lugar. Además, aquí se está dando a conocer nuestra cultura, que es muy importante y algo que no debemos de olvidar aunque estemos muy lejos de nuestra patria, pero la importancia es hacerlo en donde sea. Life and death are truly the core experiences that will, in fact, bind people together. And that, to me, there's a, there's a kind of space between life and death, and that space is healing. Art is about healing. When people participate in art when they make it, when they view it. It is the same as making yourself well. Well, traditionally, uh, I started making altars through my grandmother, who was uh, from Jalisco. Her name was Teresita Diaz, and this is her. And this is my grandfather, Wenceslao Diaz, and they came from Jalisco, and they were very religious. And we've been celebrating Dia de los Muertos for a long time. And uh, I made this altar this year at home 
to commemorate some of my friends who died of AIDS this year. On the very top, you see a, a calavera that says Sida, and that represents AIDS in Spanish. And then we have the Virgen de Guadalupe that I made as, um, as a calavera because she's a symbol of, of not only the Catholic uh, Virgin, but also Tonantzi, the Aztec uh, godmother. And uh, also in my altar, I have my friend Carol Nunez, who died in a traffic accident when we were teenagers. Then I have my cousin Rosana Mares from Denver, Colorado, and she was run over when we were teenagers. And this year, I, um, I'm honoring my friend Rene, uh, who uh, passed away in September of AIDS. Death is almost like an obscenity in this, in this culture. And among Latinos and, and Chicanos, and particularly in the, the Mission District community, around the time of Dia de los Muertos, death is made to be lovable and life-giving and joyful, ironic, all the things that I think other people can't have. I believe that's why it has grown in a highly proportionate numbers of people outside the community joining in. has created a new art form. Altars drawn as much from imagination as from custom. Essentially what it means is that there are elements in our, all cultures that give um, health uh, to the people if they retain those elements. And particularly for Latinos, uh, we have uh, sometimes have had to separate ourselves from that culture. And that separation, that dislocation, uh, has created an imbalance, which in effect is ill health. And when we're saying la cultura cura, we're saying return to your culture, maintain your culture, because the basis of your health is there. You will be able to find within the richness of the culture that which you need to live today. The altar this year is being dedicated to all the children that are dying in wars in all the countries like uh, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Central and South America, and uh, uh, Africa. South Africa, where they're dying also for freedom. And the children started bringing um, their toys, their favorite little toys, because uh, they thought that, uh, that if they were dead and they were wherever they go, heaven, they would like to play with toys. So they just started bringing toys for these children. One of the little girls brought this egg um, Marta Murillo, her mother died, and she says that this is the last thing that her mother gave her before she died. 
so she brought it and she says that um, she thinks a child would like would like to play with it, you know, in heaven or wherever they go. two different things either a wish for yourself before you die or a wish for our friend's uh, family or our friend whose mother died on Tuesday yeah, I know that even though he's not here he would feel really good to, to hear these things and he might somehow feel them okay okay Camila I wish for him I wish that my our friend would feel better when he comes back to school thank you okay George I wish that before I die that my sons or daughters will stay healthy or something. Okay, that's a nice wish. Vanessa? I wish that before I die, my little brother would take care of my mother. That's a beautiful wish. Brian? Okay. I wish before I die, nobody else dies in my family. Okay. Patricia? Um, I wish before I die, I could see my best friend again. Who's your best friend? Vanessa. <laughs> Carlos? I wish when I died, Chito could, be, Chito could be married already. The Chito could be married already. He's your good friend, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? Pia? I hope that before I die, that I could have a reunion with all my friends. Oh, that would be nice. You invite me? <laughs> <laughs> Para el habitante de Nueva York, París o Londres, la muerte es la palabra que jamás se pronuncia porque quema los labios. El mexicano, en cambio, la frecuenta, la burla, la acaricia, duerme con ella, la festeja. Es uno de sus juguetes favoritos y su amor más permanente. 